Joining me in the studio to discuss some more on the issues of the Petroleum Industry Act is the Group Managing Director of the NNPC, Meleko Lokiari. It's good to have you on News Extra, sir. Thank you very much to see you today. Thank you so much, too. So, Jamdi, let's begin with your overview on the PIA. Yes, thank you very much. I think, uh, to say the least, uh, it's a long road brought to an, a very, very fruitful end. Uh, as we all may be aware, the petroleum industry is governed by regulations and laws uh, that are essentially enacted in 1969. It means that this is a very stale law. It did not move with time. It did not recognize the fact that uh, the oil industry has changed monumentally. And of course, the, the efforts to bring in a new legislation started almost 21 years ago in the year 2000 when the oil and gas industry uh, committee to create reforms was initiated. And that in practically introduced uncertainty into the industry. Uh, this country was not able to bring that uh, legal process, the process of making a new legislation and reform to end until this very opportunity that we have today. Uh, and of course, it's also providence, you know, it's simply unimaginable that with the best of efforts since 2008, when the petroleum industry bill was introduced to the National Assembly, it just practically become impossible to put it into law. And what providence has brought is the marriage of uh, uh, a very clement uh, legislative environment, a very uh, purposeful leadership in the National Assembly, both in the House of Representatives and in the Senate. And of course, the alignment with the executive arm of the government and with the strong leadership of Mr. President, that combination made it possible for us to take the, the law into, into where it is today. Mm -hmm. And therefore, it is a law that is long awaited by the industry, not just in Nigeria, but overall, all over the world. Everybody thinks that, you know, without, without doing this, you know, you cannot have the right investment in this country. And there are very practical evidence to show to this. First, uh, we are aware that there are over 10, $50 billion of investment into Sub-Saharan African in the last five years. And out of that, only $3 billion came into Nigeria. The very reason is very, very simple. There's fiscal uncertainty here. Our environment is not competitive, mm -hmm. and people are not sure what will happen. And essentially, so the history is this, uh, that uh, today history is made. The PIA is passed, and of course, is the end of a very, very bad situation that we find ourselves. Sure, history is made. Now, NNPC is, you know, transiting to a karma company. What happens to your numerous subsidiaries? We all know that NNPC has subsidiaries. So what happens to uh, the numerous subsidiaries with uh, the NNPC? Yes, thank you. Uh, the fact is that today, NNPC is governed under the uh, NNPC Act, a corporation that is established under the NNPC Act. This is the meaning of this is that uh, NMPC is not a karma company. It's not a company that is governed under the Company and Allied Matters Act. But with the passage of the PIA, PIB into law, now the PIA, uh, it is now going to be a karma company. That means you are going to have a holding company which is completely a karma company. Mm -hmm. and, and of course it has subsidiaries. Those subsidiaries are all individually registered as uh, uh, karma companies. And of course there are, there are some requirements to this. First, Every karma company must make profit. If you don't do, within a certain period of time, as established in the, under the karma rules, that you can be liquidated. And therefore, it is a, extremely a new development for NNPC. It's a new opportunity for NNPC, because uh, uh, today, now we have to justify our existence. Uh, you do not have any patronage from government. You have no access to resources of the state to make you whole. You do not have also have those liquidity that ordinarily you could have if you are a, a corporation of, that's owned by the state. So. I think it's a new challenge for us, mm -hmm. but of course for the NMPC companies and the subsidiaries, it's a time for great challenge. They are doing well today, but they can do better. Let's talk about the dedication, you know, of the 30% frontier exploration funds to take care of, you know, exploration and development activities of the oil discoveries in generating, you know, a heated debate. You know, some argue that global communities, you know, including international oil companies, IOCs are looking for alternatives, you know, to fossil fuel, while others say, you know, fossil fuel remain critical and countries endowed with it must make haste to harness and uh, maximize, its, maximize its value. Now, what's your take on that? First of all, uh, you, you understand that the whole world is uh, transiting uh, to clean up fuel, and Nigeria is not an exception. This country is signatory to all the protocols that are uh, at establishing a net carbon zero situation in globally. Uh, the meaning of this is that you must change the utilization of crude oil and gas resources. You must shift to much cleaner fuel. But it doesn't mean that you are eliminating crude oil or gas. What it means is that make the use of the gas and the oil in such a way that you know, your effect on the environment becomes uh, net zero. 
Net zero doesn't mean there's no carbon emission. It means that you know, you're doing other things that will make sure that uh, the, the carbon effect of our, our businesses uh, is reduced. So for us now, what does it mean to NMPC and to this country? First of all, we're a gas country. Uh, many people don't realize that we're a gas country. Uh, we have enormous gas resources in this country, and the meaning of this is that uh, you, have, you must have a transition fuel. Every estimate that we know and we are aware of shows that you know, gas utilization will peak probably in another 20 years' time. It means that gas will continue to be relevant in the scheme of things in the global energy mix. It doesn't also eliminate oil. Uh, it doesn't eliminate because oil will still remain relevant. There is a forecast that even in the year 2015, you could still have up to 100 million barrels per day of oil consumption globally. Uh, from where we are today, about 94 that we have today. So it means that there will be marginal increase. It will not be eliminated despite the increase in population and economies, but you will still have need for oil. So oil is not going to go away. But the companies and countries and jurisdictions that will remain in business are those that are very effective. You produce at the least cost, the least distraction, the most attractive for investors. So this is what the PIB tried to do, to make our country a much more attractive business environment, a much more attractive place to put your money into it a much more claim and business environment while focusing on development of gas both for into the domestic market and into the uh, into export market. This is working and um, we've seen this work. We have seen very significant increase in the demand and utilization of gas in our country. There are a number of uh, projects that are going on today that I'm aware of and the net result is that with the PIB's uh, incentives, the PIB's provision that we see today, you'll see more gas utilization in our country and for us, uh, it's, a, it's a really a threshold of opportunity for, mm -hmm. for Nigeria. Mm -hmm. uh, we're becoming very competitive. Every company that's in this, in this world, in this business, is looking forward to coming to Nigeria. Okay. And that is tied into the very fact that you have mentioned around uh, looking for more oil. You yeah. know, why would you look for more oil when you have uh, 203 billion barrels of oil, proven oil reserve? You have over 203, uh, sorry, 37 billion barrels of proven oil reserve, and you have over 203 uh, uh, million trillion scope of uh, uh, establish uh, gas. Mm -hmm. What would you do for that? And of course, uh, what is very clear, and every country is looking forward to expand its energy resources. It doesn't mean that oil will go away. Mm -hmm. The more oil you have, the more opportunities that you have. Location matters to you. As much as you have a spread in a large country like this, you, you have all the opportunities that's come. That is why the PIA established the, the Frontier Exploration Fund. We and to be financed with 30% of the profit oil from NMPC's profit oil. I think it's a good thing that we will see coming. Yeah, sure it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we can't talk about fuel without talking about the host communities. Now, 3% set aside, you know, for host, host communities uh, is generating, you know, debates all around. Can you help clear the misconceptions? Because so many people have issues with it. I think I will say clearly that we probably have under-communicated. Uh, I'm not sure what you have today can happen at any other time other than during the, the leadership of this. But with due respect, you know, I, can, I can say that uh, the, the suggestion or the provision of the 3% or any of the host community itself was a creation of the executive arm of this government. Mm -hmm. It wasn't introduced by anybody else except that we realized that uh, every intervention that we have done over the years, there are many interventions that were, that were practically done to make sure that host communities are catered for. The 13% derivation, the NDDC, and so many other interventions that we are aware of are designed to make sure that, you know, the Niger Delta region mm -hmm. in general, and in particular where oil is particularly found, are catered for. Okay. Uh, most of these initiatives haven't uh, delivered what they should do. And the reason is very simple. It's not just about lack of commitment, but because the very fact that communities are not properly engaged. And we think that without bordering around the provisions that exist in this framework, mm -hmm. which some of them are going through very um, enlightened reform, uh, particularly in the NDDC where the single senator probably is doing well you know, trying to create a different uh, line of uh, activity for it. But what we did is that to create okay. a fund which is 3% of the operating expense of all the oil producing companies in okay. those regions. Okay. This is a very large number. Uh, people don't realize that in fiscal year 2020, we spent about $16 billion as operating expense. When you take 3% of mm -hmm. that, it gives you over $500 uh, million dollars so per annum. It's a very huge, huge amount of amount money, of bigger okay. than the budget of NDDC, and not, most people don't realize this. But the most important part of it is that the communities that are brought into the equation. They will be in charge of this. They are responsible for establishing the project. Mm -hmm. They will decide what works for their community. I think that is what is uh, fundamentally very different. Well, thank you so much for all that clarification, uh, GMD. And now, before I allow you go, can you still clarify your earlier statement on NMPC and Nongote refinery shares, as well as, you know, those stakeholders' um, agreement and all of that? Yes, there are a lot of uh, misunderstanding out there mm -hmm. around the NMPC acquisition of 20% interest in the Nongote refinery. What is not 
uh, obvious to all is that, first of all, uh, the Dangote group doesn't want us to take this equity. Uh, that is one misconception out there. They thought that we're just uh, jumping into okay. take at the instance of Dangote. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. The second thing is that there's no country, no resource dependent country like us will agree to allow such monumental project with energy security implication. Of course, we all know that energy security has connection with fiscal security mm -hmm. of any country. Okay. You cannot afford to have such kind of uh, asset in your country and the government will not have a seat on the on the, on the on the board of such uh, institution. Right. Uh, okay. By the way, beyond this, uh, uh, I can also tell you that uh, this is a very, very lucrative business. Okay. Uh, we know that we can get back all our money in three years. We're not going to take government money to put into this and <laughs> ultimately <laughs> we'll all benefit from it. From it. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah. That's the most important thing. Thank you so much, the Group Managing Director of NAPC Milikari for coming on a News Extra. Thank you very much and thank you for the time. Yes. Appreciate it. Uh,